What is going on guys? Welcome to part eight of how to open a barbershop. And today we're just gonna talk about some of the things that maybe I forgot to mention. You guys left a lot of feedback in the last video with some questions and some other topics that you wanted me to talk about. Some of these things I know, some of these things I don't know a lot about. Some of these things are Kentucky laws that you're gonna have to kind of see what applies to you. But we're gonna go over it today and I promise this is the last boring video of me sitting at this table talking to you because as we record this, we're about five days from getting the keys and we're gonna start to put the shop together. So the next one is gonna be exciting. And guys, you gave me a lot of feedback. You want me to show you everything, hanging the TVs, hanging the mirrors, putting everything together. So I'm gonna do that. It's probably gonna be a long video, but you guys should get tons of gems from that. So that will be coming up next. But today we're gonna sit here and we're just gonna talk a little bit. So I got my phone out. I got a couple notes here. Let's see what the first thing is. Yeah, so the first thing we're gonna talk about guys is licensing, barber board what you gotta do with all that to get your shop license. So obviously I'm in Kentucky, these laws are gonna apply to me. If you're somewhere else, you just need to reach out to your barber board. But Kentucky does require a new shop license or a new shop uh, application. So you fill that out, you're gonna put your name, your info on it, the address, all that stuff. Now in Kentucky, it does require a plumbing inspection. So basically when I get the sink put in at the new shop, which should be happening any day now, and the plumbing inspector comes, I need to make sure that he signs and checks off on my form. Otherwise I cannot turn that paper in and get the shop inspected from the barber board. So the plumbing inspection must be done first. And that's because most of the time you have to add a sink or whatever and they wanna make sure that the plumbing is done correctly. So then you're gonna mail that in. I think in Kentucky it's $200 for a new shop application. Then the inspector will come out. They usually work with me pretty well. They'll ask when you're trying to open, they'll come out and they will inspect it. Now guys, in Kentucky at least, you have to have a full station set up, barbicide, all of that stuff, all the sanitation, trash can, towel bin, place for your license, all of that stuff you have to have before they will inspect it. But we're gonna take care of that, we'll set it up, the inspector will come in, check out everything, sign off on you. And then I believe that that day you're good to open up even if you don't have the license yet because obviously they have to you know, go back, turn it in, then they will make your license and send it out. But that is the process in Kentucky. Uh, aside from that, guys, you can get a business license. I think you probably are supposed to get a business license. When I first opened my barbershop, my dad said, you know, did you get your business license? And I said, I've never heard of a business license. And I had worked in another shop. I don't know that they had one. I don't know that every shop in town has one. Uh, and that is local. So that is in my city. You go down to the you know city courthouse or whatever it's called and get a business license and you pay some you know business tax so some more tax stuff uh, but that is the correct way and again guys that is about all i know about that i don't know a whole lot more i just knew that that was the right thing to do i'm looking at it right here occupational business license for clutch barber co and that kind of goes with our city taxes and all that the next thing we're going to touch on guys is a business plan now i didn't need a business plan to move forward with my second location but we touched on it slightly in the last video about getting financing and a lot of the times you will need a business plan of some sort to turn in and basically guys the business plan is all the stuff that we talked about so far right in loose terms guys you're just gonna say hey this is the plan for the shop it costs this much a month I'm gonna put in four barber chairs they will each pay 150 a week that's 600 a barber a month times four barbers is $2,400 a month, the rent is $1,500. That will cover the rent and leave me uh, $900 and change, or whatever. That's kind of loosely your business plan. You just wanna map things out for the person that's either gonna finance it, and my first landlord actually wanted a business plan to make sure that I had it figured out, that everything was gonna work and that I could pay the bills. So everything we've been over in this series, what it's gonna cost, how many chairs, all those things. Those are loosely your business plan. And again, guys, I really haven't had to write one myself. So if you need more help with that, you may need to look elsewhere. But if you do need a business plan, just know that's kind of where you're gonna start. It's just basically explaining what the business is, what it does, how it's gonna make money, how it's gonna pay the bills, and basically all the numbers that we already went over. The next thing we're gonna talk about is insurance. Now, a lot of the time in your lease, it will require you to have insurance. If it doesn't, it's probably a good idea to have it anyways but my lease requires insurance up to a million dollars, or I say up to at least a million dollars. Now that is like accident insurance, guys. So say somebody slices an ear off, like you guys saw that prank that they did on Instagram or YouTube. You cut somebody's ear off for real though, and they sue you or whatever for uh, accident, for injury, whatever. Uh, I do have a million dollar policy for the barbershop itself. And then each of my barbers is covered in that policy for up to 100,000 for each of them. So that is something you guys can get from like a local insurance agent. I just went to where my car was from. He does our homeowners as well. And I said, do you do business insurance? And he said, yes. So I have that. I also have kind of, I think it's called like loss prevention or loss, total loss insurance, something like that. So I have a $250,000 policy. If this whole building was to burn down, I would get $250,000 towards putting it back together. So keep in mind that includes all the tool chests, all the mirrors, all of that, but also all the clippers, there's money in here. There's, I mean, there's so much stuff in here, right? Some of it is not replaceable, 
But uh, I mean, you know, this wall behind me is, is hefty. So those are two types of insurance that you guys want to have. I don't know what you have to have. It depends on your lease, depends on your laws in your state, something you want to look into. And guys, these are the things, kind of like paying taxes and doing it right. A lot of times the business licenses, the insurance, those are things that we think we can like, eh, I'm just not going to get it. Nobody's ever going to know. You know, those type of things are just risky. And as you get further in life, guys, you just want to make sure that you do things right. You don't want to get caught. I think the phrase is with your pants down in a, in a situation in your barber shop and you know, you could lose everything. So if it burned down and you had no insurance, you would be stuck. You would be SOL, no tools, no barbershop, no nothing. And all that money you invested, we, you know, we just talked about, I just spent 25,000 on the new barbershop and we move everybody's stuff over there. It burns down and everybody's out and that's on me. So you guys want to do it right. Insurance, look into your lease, look into your laws around there, what you have to carry, reach out to a local insurance agent that is about all I really know about the topic. All right, so this is actually from some comments that I got on the channel. Those first topics were things I thought of, but these are from some comments and somebody asked how I take care of taxes, bookkeeping, accounting, and all that. Now guys, I will say before I just didn't do anything. I just put the booth rent in the bank. I paid the bills. I didn't really keep track of it. I just did taxes at a little local lady at the end of the year, pretty simple. Uh, but now I have Pi Accounting, which is through Tune 45, not through Tune 45, but kind of a sister company. Pi Accounting is barber specific taxes. They'll do just your barber taxes. For me, they do my my whole S Corp taxes, the barbershop numbers, my personal numbers, my YouTube, all of my things that are all wrapped up into one and they made me an S Corporation and then helped me get that set up. So if you guys aren't familiar with Pi Accounting, guys, I think it's $325 a month or maybe $350 a month and they will do all of your bookkeeping, all of your taxes, everything you need to know as a barber. If you want to get set up as an S Corporation or an LLC or whatever it is, they will steer you in the right direction and they are barber specific. So they can look into exactly the specifics of what barbers can deduct, what we can write off, what we can do, they help me get my house, right? They help me make sure that my taxes look good to help me get my house. So if you guys are looking for a bookkeeper, for a tax person, somebody that knows barbering, you guys should definitely check out Pi Accounting and I'll put the link down in the description. And this is not a paid ad guys, this is just kind of the team, uh, the accounting firm through Tune that I got hooked up with and they have taken care of me super well and have turned my finances around. And you know, you guys see, man, I'm doing great. So I, I have to give them a little bit of credit because they've helped me organize, keep track, budget, do all that kind of stuff and put me in a good spot. So you guys hit them up, you can get a call with them, you can talk about where you're at, what you're trying to do and kind of what your numbers look like and they'll let you know if it's right for you. All right, somebody asked about health insurance for employees. Now guys, the way I run my barbershop, they are sole proprietors or booth renters. What's the, what's the word I'm looking for? Independent contractor, that's what it is. So they're not employees. So I don't believe there's any way for me to offer them health insurance as non-employees. Uh, they just have to get it on their own. Now I'm not gonna say there's not a way to set up the barbershop where you can make them employees and then offer health insurance, but that is gonna be beyond my knowledge. But back to the Pi Accounting, that's something they may be able to help you with. I know we've talked about with my wife, I can add her as an employee under my business and Pi was gonna help me do that. And then I can pay double into retirement, right? So I can still pay her and me the same amount that I'm paying me and we can put 3% with a 3% match into retirement. We can do it twice. And then health insurance, you can do that. You can do different things like that. So there's probably a way. I mean, obviously there is a way. I don't know any more about that, but I would tell you that the Pi team would probably be able to help you with that. And uh, hopefully that's helpful. Does booth rent include a percentage off of product? Now, I don't know exactly what that means. Percentage off of product, like hair products and whatnot, but we don't really do it that way. I basically let my barbers buy whatever products they want to do and sell it in the shop and they can do that however they want. So if you are going to do a shop wide product, you guys can reach out to a company, get a wholesale account. And I guess you could set up something like that. Like if they pay booth rent, then they get it for a certain price. I don't know. Some shops probably want to collect all the income. So the barbers sell it and the shop keeps it all. I don't do any of that, guys. I let my barbers buy what they want, sell what they want, make the profit, but they got to buy it. And if they send somebody in to get some product that I have, then I keep the money. Now, the last question is how do I manage my stress levels? And I'll tell you guys, years ago when I first opened the shop, I was much worse. And I've heard Bossy talk about this. I think it's just naturally the progression as a shop owner. But I used to work about like why is the air conditioning on why is the light left on overnight and somebody didn't do this and somebody didn't sleep and I would just just worry nonstop about it and it, it definitely was stressing me out I've never been a super stressful person uh, but definitely that is something difficult especially when you put all this work in all this money in to get your shop going and then you know somebody doesn't clean right or doesn't do this or they leave the the water running all night or whatever it might be uh, but at the end of the day guys these things are not a big deal I think just naturally as you go through the progression of owning the shop for a while you start to ease up on those things and realize what's important uh, but it is difficult I mean there is a stress you know right now I'll be honest guys we're waiting for the shop to get finished the second 
location. The floor is not looking like how I want. And I, I got home last night and realized that I really wasn't stressing it. Like it'll work out. And I think I have this new, as I get older, this mindset that, you know, everything always works out. It's gonna, it's gonna play out. It's gonna, all you can do is figure it out and, and move forward. And sitting here worrying about it, freaking out about it is nothing uh, that's gonna help the situation. So I would tell you that as a shop owner, easier said than done. When you're brand new, you're gonna be super worried. Every client that walks out, Everything that happens, you're gonna be super worried about. And I think that is natural, but I will tell you guys it will get easier and you guys will get much more the hang of being a shop owner and handling all the stress of the shop, but it can be stressful at times. All right, so that is all I have for today. I'm gonna to probably wait and add a few more clips after this. So I may be somewhere else, or I may be in a different outfit, but we'll get back to it if I got any other points to make. All right, so I have a few points to make that are kind of obvious, but again, some of you guys are gonna be doing this for the first time, so it may not be obvious, but if you guys want internet, you're gonna to have to get the Wi-Fi set up. I'm actually meeting them out there tomorrow to get it set up. On top of that, you're gonna to have to transfer all the utilities into your name and your business name. I think I talked about that in the expense video on that you may have some deposits for that. But for us, we have gas and electric. But any of that kind of stuff, guys, any of the services, they're gonna be monthly if you have, like we have CentOS that brings us paper towels and toilet paper and things like that. Uh, any services like that, aside from the haircutting stuff, you know, we did all of that equipment ourselves. I have a guy putting an ATM in so you can get cash out. But those are all things you guys can decide to do. You don't have to do. You obviously have to do the utilities. But Wi-Fi, I guess you could go without Wi-Fi if you don't have TVs, if you don't need it for anything. But Wi-Fi, utilities, ATM, cleaning services, all that kind of stuff. You guys will need to set that up yourself. And that is something I want to make sure I mention in here so you guys can be thinking about that as you start your barbershop. All right, guys, check it out. I'm out at the new location. And this isn't really something I forgot to mention in the videos. If nothing had happened, I wouldn't be here telling you guys this. But I'm almost glad it did so I can show you guys an example. But when you guys are dealing with the build out, a lot of the times the builders, the, the guys doing the work, all of that, you know, they want to get it done fast as possible, cheap as possible. They're wanting to just get this done so they can make money, right? Everybody's in business here. So all the way from the contractors, and I'm not trying to say anybody's crooked, but sometimes some things may try to get overlooked. And if you are somebody that is kind of a pushover, or like I said, if you're young, if you're kind of timid, they're definitely gonna try to say, all right, here you go, this is what it is. And if you don't speak up, you're gonna get stuck with something that you're not happy with. So I'm out here to show you guys today a couple things we're dealing with at my new location. I'm supposed to have possession right now. It's supposed to be mine, it's supposed to be finished. I don't know if you guys can tell, but it is not painted yet. And you can see over here, the boxes somewhere right here, that's still the sink and the shampoo bowl. So the floor has held us up, I'm gonna show you guys. But I actually have a meeting first thing in the morning to go over the floor, tell them I'm not happy with it. And I have to stand firm and say, hey, listen, like this needs to be perfect. This, I didn't sign a deal that said do it 80% good and that's good. And then I just wanted to make this video, one to show you guys because I have documented the whole process. Don't really have anywhere to put this footage. It's not a whole video, but it does fit in the category of things I haven't mentioned. And like I said, if we hadn't had to deal with it, I wouldn't be mentioning it, but I'm gonna show you guys some of the problems. And tomorrow we're gonna have a meeting and I'm gonna tell them this needs to be fixed. This needs to be fixed. Here's what we need to do about the floor. And you guys need to watch that as you go in because it's easy to get taken advantage of when you're starting a business, when you're a little bit timid, you're a little bit scared maybe of the landlord or the contractor because you know, you're know you the new guy, right? This is what they do. And sometimes you can kind of accept things or be afraid to speak up. So I would just encourage you guys to speak up and make sure we get it right. So I don't really know how much I talked about it before guys, but there was carpet squares in here. And with the glare, you can't see it as bad as I can see it right now. I'm looking at the camera, but I hope you guys can see the pattern did not come off. So they told me they were gonna grind the floor down. You can see it's all the way through. They're gonna grind the floor down. They can cover it up pretty well. It'll be like kind of swirly and just scratched up. And as you guys can see, it did not come off. So they tried to tell me an interior designer came in and said it looked like a cool pattern. And you know, they were trying to sell it, sell it to me basically and make it sound okay. I don't think it's okay. And they were supposed to test it out in the break room before they did the entire floor. So now we're gonna run late on delivery. Like I said, it is the first today. I'm supposed to have it today. It's still not painted. The sinks still aren't in because the floor already has held them up. And now I'm gonna tell them that they have to redo it. And I'm gonna show you guys what we're gonna do in a second. But here's another thing that they were gonna let slide. The electricians, when they took these from two to four, apparently thought that it was acceptable to cut the holes too big. Now, I'm not gonna say they thought it was acceptable because you know once you cut it, you don't have the plate there, but they went home, called their boss, and said that the clutch job was finished, and this is what the job looked like. So again, guys, that is on you to say something. If you don't say something, 
They're gonna leave it like that. So we're gonna run probably a week late. In the meeting tomorrow, I'm gonna tell them, hey, listen, I already got some new stuff for the floor, because they were saying, you know, oh, we already spent this much, and the contractor was out there for three days grinding the floor. I don't care. <laughs> you didn't test it first, you didn't do what you said, and I'm not happy with it. So I got some flooring next door, I'm gonna take you over there and show you, but I'm gonna give them the next week. So today is Thursday the 1st, so technically it's gonna put us into like seven, eight days into the month, but I'm gonna give them the whole next week and say, hey, look, here's the product, fix the floor, fix the receptacles, make sure it's painted. Obviously it's gotta be painted. I don't know how it's not painted yet. They already put the trim down. They're about to put the sink and stuff in. But again, you gotta speak up. I'm just kind of ranting on this, but if you guys can't tell, I've been a little stressed and a little frustrated about it. So I think we got it figured out, but I wanted to come out here and share that with you guys. Now I'm gonna run next door and show you guys what we're gonna do to the floor. This is a garage floor coating. You guys look real close. It's like gray with speckles in it. So you actually roll it on and then shake some like uh, confetti looking, well, you can see them on the top of the box. Let's see, those little uh, confetti looking things, you shake them on and then on the left, this is primer. And basically guys, what they were trying to tell me was if they have to redo the floor, they have to grind it again, that's gonna take two or three more days, then they have to scrub it clean, then they have to wait for it to dry, then they have to put the new stuff down and it takes 36 hours or 48 hours or three days or whatever, and it's gonna put it off so long and they were kind of trying to make it sound impossible, so I think honestly that I wouldn't do it. And so I went my own way, I went and found this, it takes six hours to put the primer on, or you have to wait six hours, and then you wanna put the top coat immediately on and then it can be stepped on in 24 hours. So I solved the problem for them, I bought it, I'm gonna say, here, I bought it, you guys can put it down, and you know, if they argue, I'm gonna say, well, you guys were supposed to test it first. So had you tested it first, we would have went ahead and done this at that point and you wouldn't be wasting your time. So, you know, like I said, guys, you gotta stand up for yourself. You gotta make sure it's right. Cause you only get one shot. Once it's all finished, once you move in, I was gonna be looking at that floor every day going, ah, we should have redone this floor. So anyway, guys, that is it for this video. I don't think I have anything else. Like I said, if there is another clip, it'll be next. And if not, check out the playlist of how to open a barbershop right here. If you guys missed any of the other videos and I'll catch you guys next time.